Childbirth is a powerful and natural process. For many, it follows a path that has been anticipated for months. Labor begins, contractions grow stronger, and a vaginal delivery is the expected outcome. However, the journey of bringing a new life into the world is not always predictable. Sometimes, medical circumstances arise that require a different approach. A cesarean section or C-section is a surgical procedure used to deliver a baby. It is not a failure of the natural process, but rather a critical intervention that prioritizes the health and safety of both the parent and the child when complications occur. It is a path that, while different, leads to the same beautiful destination, a healthy baby. When a person goes into labor, they are monitored closely. The medical team tracks the strength and frequency of contractions. They also monitor the baby's heart rate to ensure the infant is handling the stress of labor well. A C-section may become necessary for several reasons. For instance, labor might not be progressing. This is a condition called failure to progress, where the cervix isn't dilating enough despite strong contractions. The baby might also show signs of distress, indicated by a concerning pattern in their heart rate. These signs tell doctors that the baby may not be getting enough oxygen, and a faster delivery is needed to ensure their well-being. Another common reason for an unplanned C-section is the baby's position. Ideally, a baby is positioned head down, ready to move through the birth canal. However, sometimes a baby is in a breech position, with feet or bottom first, or a transverse position, meaning sideways. While some breech babies can be delivered vaginally, it carries higher risks, and a C-section is often the safer choice. Other issues, such as problems with the placenta like placenta previa, where the placenta covers the cervix or placental abruption, where it separates from the uterine wall, make a vaginal delivery dangerous. In these critical moments, the decision to perform a C-section is made to prevent life-threatening complications. The decision is a collaborative one, made between the expecting parent and their healthcare provider. The doctor will explain the situation clearly. They will outline why a C-section is recommended and what the risks and benefits are. The goal is always to ensure the parent feels informed and involved in the decision-making process, even when time is of the essence. While an emergency C-section can feel sudden and overwhelming, it is a testament to modern medicine's ability to navigate the complexities of childbirth. It is a procedure that has saved countless lives and continues to be a vital tool in ensuring safe and healthy outcomes for families around the world. Once the decision for a C-section is made, the parent is moved to a sterile operating room. This environment looks very different from a typical labor and delivery room. It is bright, clean, and filled with specialized medical equipment. The space is organized for efficiency and safety. In the center is the operating table, and surrounding it are monitors, surgical instruments, and life support machines. It can seem intimidating, but every person and every piece of equipment has a specific role to play in the procedure. The focus is singular, to deliver the baby safely and care for the birthing parent throughout the surgery, ensuring comfort and stability. The medical team for a C-section is a well-coordinated group of specialists. At the head of the team is the obstetrician, the surgeon who will perform the procedure. Assisting the obstetrician is another doctor or a surgical assistant. There is also a scrub nurse who prepares the sterile instruments and passes them to the surgeon. A circulating nurse manages the overall operating room environment, assists the team, and documents the procedure. This nurse is often a key point of contact for the parent and their partner, offering reassurance and updates. Every member communicates clearly and works together seamlessly to ensure the surgery proceeds smoothly from start to finish. An essential member of this team is the anesthesiologist. This doctor is responsible for the parent's pain management and vital signs throughout the surgery. Before the operation begins, the anesthesiologist will administer anesthesia, which is most often a regional block like an epidural or a spinal block. This numbs the lower half of the body but allows the parent to remain awake and alert for the baby's birth. The anesthesiologist continuously monitors blood pressure, heart rate, and oxygen levels, making adjustments as needed. Their expertise ensures the parent is safe and comfortable, allowing them to focus on the incredible moment of meeting their child. Finally, a team is present just for the baby. 
This pediatric team, which may include a pediatrician, a neonatologist, or a neonatal nurse practitioner, is ready to provide immediate care as soon as the baby is born. They stand by with a warming unit and resuscitation equipment prepared for any scenario. Their presence guarantees that the newborn receives expert medical attention from the very first moments of life. This comprehensive team approach, with specialists dedicated to both parent and child, is the cornerstone of a safe cesarean delivery. Each person has a vital role, working in concert to protect two lives. The surgery begins with careful preparation. The parent is positioned on the operating table and a sterile drape is placed over their abdomen. A screen is usually set up near the parent's chest. This screen blocks the view of the surgical site, but it allows the parent and their partner to be present without seeing the operation. The anesthesiologist confirms that the anesthesia is effective, ensuring the parent cannot feel any pain. The parent's abdomen is then cleaned with an antiseptic solution to minimize the risk of infection. This preparation phase is deliberate and unhurried, designed to establish a safe and sterile field before the first incision is ever made. With everything in place, the obstetrician makes the first incision through the skin and the fatty tissue underneath. This is typically a low horizontal cut, often called a bikini cut, just above the pubic hairline. This type of incision is preferred because it is strong and heals well, often leaving a less noticeable scar. The surgeon then carefully works through the subsequent layers of tissue and separates the abdominal muscles. These muscles are usually moved apart rather than cut, which helps to speed up the recovery process after surgery. Each layer is handled with precision to minimize trauma to the surrounding tissues. After reaching the uterus, the surgeon makes a second incision, this time into the uterine wall itself. This incision is also usually low and transverse. The location and type of uterine incision are critical for the safety of future pregnancies. The surgeon then gently clears the way to reach the baby. The parent may feel some pressure or a tugging sensation at this point, but they should not feel any pain. The surgeon then carefully lifts the baby's head and guides the shoulders and body out of the uterus. This moment is the culmination of the entire surgery, the instant the baby transitions from the womb to the world. Within moments of the delivery, the operating room is filled with the sound of the baby's first cry. The umbilical cord is clamped and cut, and the baby is handed to the pediatric team for a quick assessment. While the newborn is being cared for, the surgeon delivers the placenta and then begins the meticulous process of closing the incisions. Each layer, the uterus, the abdominal muscles, and the skin, is sutured carefully. This part of the procedure takes longer than the delivery itself, as it is crucial for proper healing. The parent, now able to see and often hold their baby, can finally focus on this new chapter. Immediately after the surgery, the parent and baby are moved to a recovery room. Here, they are closely monitored for the first few hours. Nurses will check the parent's blood pressure, heart rate, and breathing. They will also check the surgical incision and monitor vaginal bleeding, which is normal after any type of birth. Pain medication is provided to manage the discomfort as the anesthesia wears off. This is also a critical time for bonding. If both parent and baby are stable, skin-to-skin -skin contact is encouraged. This practice helps regulate the baby's temperature and breathing, and it fosters a powerful connection between parent and child from the very beginning. The healing process from a C-section is a gradual one. It is, after all, major abdominal surgery. The first few days are often the most challenging. Getting out of bed for the first time can be difficult, but movement is encouraged to prevent blood clots and help the body recover. The hospital staff will provide guidance on how to move, care for the incision, and manage pain. The incision will be sore, and activities like coughing, laughing, and lifting will require support. Most people stay in the hospital for two to four days after a C-section, giving their body a chance to begin healing under medical supervision. Once at home, recovery continues for several weeks. It is important to follow the doctor's instructions carefully. This includes avoiding heavy lifting, strenuous exercise, and driving for a period of time, typically around six weeks. The incision site needs to be kept clean and dry to prevent infection. Watching for signs of complications, such as fever, increased pain, or redness around the incision, is also crucial. Recovery is not just physical, it is emotional as well. 
It is normal to feel a wide range of emotions after a C-section, especially if it was unplanned. Allowing oneself time to process the birth experience is a key part of healing. Childbirth, in any form, is a significant life event. Whether a baby arrives via vaginal delivery or a C-section, the journey is unique and personal. If you have questions about your birth experience, your recovery, or your health, it is essential to speak with your doctor or healthcare provider. They can offer personalized medical advice, support, and the resources you need to navigate the postpartum period safely and confidently. Do not hesitate to reach out. Your health and well-being are the foundation of your new family, and asking for help is a sign of strength.